Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I have, a, I have a tiny little project that I want to involve you in. It's about heating my playhouse here. I have a heat pump and it uses power and well power is expensive so I wanted to maximize the power usage or get the most heat out of the power uses as I can. So let's just go see the heat pump for a second. Here is the heat pump and it's a air to water system. So what it does, it takes the, the heat out of the air with some compressor and it heats up the pipes. The, the cold water comes in this pipe and the hot water goes out this pipe. The heat pump is most effective when it does not need to heat the water too high. So if I can have the, the heat pump just deliver me 45 or 40 degrees Celsius hot water, that's when it works the best. Also, if the temperature is not below zero, it's a good thing. When you come below zero, the efficiency of the heat pumps go dramatically down. Also, how hot does it need to heat up the water is very important to how effective it is. And you, you measure this in like when you put one kilowatt of power into it, then you can get two kilowatts of heat back out or you can get two and a half kilowatt back out, or you can get three kilowatt, and that's the effectiveness of it. At the lower temperature, it's more effective. When Let's see if I can find the paper and just show this. Here is the manual of the thing that I have out there. I have the small one, that, and that's a 10 kilowatt thing, and there it's controlled with a Siemens PLC. And here are some graphs of how it works. Uh, technical data and we have some nice charts right here so there are different models here this is a nine kilowatt model and here is a I think this is the one I have I have not looked very much into this but it seems that the numbers are correct there is three different flows this is if you want the, the temperature coming into your house to be 35 degrees 45 degrees or 55 degrees here we have the amount of power we get out of the device when it's running we can expect to get somewhere between down here is six kilowatt and up to about well that's probably about 13 14 kilowatts of energy coming in heat energy and that's with at different temperatures if the temperature outside is minus 10 degrees celsius well, we only get about 6 kilowatts. More or less the power we put into it, the power we get out of it. If the temperature rises to freezing, 0 degrees Celsius, well, we get like, we, we put this amount of power into it, but we get this amount out of it. And that calculation is really done as a COP value, C-O-P. I don't know what that stands for, but it, it's like if we put one kilowatt into it at minus 10 at minus 10 degrees we will just get 1.6 kilowatt back out if and the green line is if we want 55 degrees hot water the blue line is 45 degrees hot water and the red line up here is 35 degrees hot water so there is quite a difference between those three lines they look very close but it's a lot of difference. Down here, it's, I would say about 1.7 kilowatts of energy we get out of that. And the red line would be 2.3 kilowatts of power that we get. So the lower the temperature we can, we can get into the house and have working for us, the better. And right now the temperature, let's just see what the temperature is here. The temperature outside is 4.3 degrees. So that's somewhere, let's just say five. So right now the temperature is five degrees. So if we have the high temperature, that means that we get 2.2 kilowatt of power for every kilowatt put in. But if we can go down and say, we just want 45 degrees water coming into the house, we get three kilowatts of energy right now for that one kilowatt of power put into the system. So how do you do that? You have to have big radiators. This radiator is twice as big as it is needed. And that's the main purpose of that is so that it can use colder water than 
what's normally needed. So instead of this radiator using 60 degrees warm water, it should be able to run with temperatures lower than that because it has a, a way bigger surface area. And well, I wanted to show you how to even increase that further. And the little device is down here on the floor. I took a little CPU fan. This is a CPU fan by Intel and I just happened to find out that it, it fits really well. On the, it can use these things and it can be put onto the radiator. And I have a couple of 18650 cells here and I shut this off at night. So I put a little piece of cardboard in there. But if I take that out, it is rather silent, but you might be able to hear it. And now this little fan is blowing up air through the radiator. And that helps a lot to cool down the radiator that way, because now the it's like having a fan blower in your computer. You might have a, a big heat sink, but that will overheat. But if you put a little bit air through it, it will keep a steady temperature. So this is just as effective. And this was just something that I came up with. Uh, my cousin came by and he had these battery holders. He got cheap of China and he threw some off at my place because, well, Morton might like these, so and he does. Now this radiator is, is really optimizing the amount of water coming into it better. It will be able to heat this room with less hot water or, well, actually more hot water, but the temperature of the water will be less. And I have another one. For those of you who might have followed my channel for quite a bit, you will remember this fan because I used it at my apartment and that was a disaster. At my apartment, the, the heat is measured by a, a device that is filled with oil and that evaporates with the heat. It wasn't the fan blower's fault, but it was the the radiator thermostats, turning on and off the radiator was a bad idea. Now I took the fan up here and it has a little circuit here and it has a heat sensor. This one works when there is heat in the radiator, it will turn on. Uh, it takes a while to heat this up, but I'll give it a try. There we are. And when it's hot, it will run the fan. And that's pretty cool because then it won't run down the batteries as fast. So I wanted to mount this today and bring you along for the ride and see how that works. So see how long these batteries will last. I don't care very much for these batteries. They are all batteries that are not very good. Hope they won't blow up if I discharge them too much. Well, this is a part of the house where we haven't been very much. In here, there's a radiator hidden away. This radiator is from the old days when the house was heated with oil and coal and it was normal to have 80 degrees hot water going through everything so it's tiny so of course the the hot water goes in here and it goes into the radiator and it goes back out there and down to the stove or the heat pump and is reheated the air goes comes in from the bottom here and goes up across the radiator and there is actually a bended plate it goes around and brings the hot air out so that it don't get stuck in there you see it better over here so my plan is to mount the fan here on either the front or the back and see how that works and just have the battery box laying down there on the on the floor and maybe get rid of some of the dust in here Radiators get really dirty because there is the airflow and they will collect dust and they're not as effective when they're full of dust So I'll start by cleaning off the dust. That will work really well Well, I've been trying to invent a little bit because I didn't really like the idea of the fan sitting right there because it's blue I could cut the color, but well, 
I might use it for another project another day and then the color might be okay. Around the back, there's, there's not very much room around the back, so it wouldn't be, really be able to get a lot of airflow. But I kind of found these, this is uh, some cabling for going into well, something and it's just a rubber thing and I found that they will fit and it will sit on those and it might help to minimize the, the vibrations. I was just gonna put it in here and let it sit there and then it will hopefully blow the air up. I'll have to have it going before we can know that. And then I have to see which way the air blows. Yeah, it blows the wrong way, so I have to turn it around. And I'll just use the fan itself to cool down the thermostat here. And I'll just take these out and put them on the other side. I turn the fan around right there. And this little sensor needs to go up where the heat is. And the thought is that when there is heat on the radiator, the fan will start blowing. And I found some electric tape. The feature of electric tape is that, oh, it lasts a long time. It's not really gonna look bad because the radiator thing here is hidden anyway. I have mounted this, cut off the tape. Now oh, it's a little bit short, so I might find something to put under there. Might just put it away underneath the radiator some more so that it's not as no noticeable and there is this is not a very effective fan blower it's it's more quiet than it is than it is effective and that's probably a good thing good thing it doesn't blink that would be irritating so i hope you enjoyed this little radiator hack and heat pump overview and i'm gonna try and let this run it will it will shut off when the heat disappears from the radiator, uh, so the thermostat is on the radiator is still good. It's still in control. It will still turn, if the room is hot enough, it will still shut off the radiator. But as soon as the radiator turns on, well, this little fan will help sucking the heat out of the water even faster than before. I didn't go much into this little electronic PCB. I did that in my other video. I'll try and see if I can have a link to that here or just there I don't know and there I try to explain how this little circuit board works and also I might put in a, a link to the fan so they will be in the description where you could get these if you are interested but well thank you for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye